Are you always stressed out about money? Does it feel like you're living paycheck to paycheck no matter how hard you try to save? If you are one of the 56% of Americans who can't cover a $1,000 emergency expense, $10,000 can be a life-changing amount of money. In this video, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide that almost anyone can implement to accomplish the goal of saving $10,000 within one year. And the best time to start is today. The first step is to develop your why. Without a strong why, none of this will work. This will keep you motivated to take the steps necessary towards saving the $10,000. For example, your why could be not wanting to go into debt if you lose your job, or wanting to pay down that stubborn student debt, or saving up for the down payment for a house, or to simply start investing. Once you determine your why, write it down and place it somewhere that you can see all the time. Studies have shown that you are 42% more likely to achieve your goals by just doing this one simple thing. The second step is to break down the goal into manageable parts. Rather than looking at a lump sum figure, break down the goal into monthly parts. On a monthly basis, $10,000 works out to $833 per month, which is a far less imposing amount. A monthly view is also more manageable because we interact with the world at this cadence. Some paychecks are paid monthly and most expenses like utilities, cell phone and credit card statements are charged on a monthly basis. Now you could break down the objective further into weekly or even daily parts, but it might become more difficult to track your progress, which is counterproductive. And there is some psychology as to why this might not work for you. I'll touch on this later in the video. Also, if you have an off day or week, you don't want to get discouraged and give up. A monthly view gives you the flexibility to make up for those off days or weeks later in the month, which means you are more likely to stick with the plan and achieve the objective of saving the $10,000. Now, with your why in hand and the monthly figure calculated, you have a realistic goalpost to aim for. The third step is to examine the levers you can control to hit this objective. The first lever is invest in yourself. Investing in your own skill set has a higher return than almost any other form of investing. This is because your ability to make money has no upper limit, and upscaling your skill set doesn't have to be expensive. For example, the median salary for a medical assistant is $60,600 per year or $5,050 per month. A skill set upgrade could be getting certified as a phlebotomist. A phlebotomist is a medical professional who is trained to draw blood. The median salary for a phlebotomist is $67,400 or $5,617 per month. The certification required to work as a phlebotomist can be completed in as little as 4 to 12 weeks and costs approximately $1,000. If you were a medical assistant, adding this certification and skill to your repertoire can increase your monthly pay by $567. After paying taxes, the take-home pay is approximately $397 per month. The certification pays for itself in a few months and the remainder is pure savings. This one-time effort got you nearly 50% of the way there to saving $833 per month. To systemize this effort, sign up for newsletters relevant to your profession or industry and set up Google alerts on new developments happening in your workspace. This way, you can become aware of lucrative new skills to acquire and take on higher earning jobs. The second lever is to take stock of your subscriptions. The average American has 12 recurring subscriptions from entertainment apps like Disney Plus, Netflix, and Spotify, to health apps like Apple Fitness Plus, and dating apps like Hinge and Bumble, this amounts to $219 per month. And this spend happens automatically every month without you realizing because subscriptions that cost less than $20 a month are much more likely to go unnoticed and thus uncanceled. And marketing professionals use this behavior to their advantage. This also validates a point I made earlier about the psychology of tracking your progress on a daily or weekly basis. $833 per month translates to approximately $27 per day. The individual components making up this amount will be less than $20, which you are more likely to ignore and thus more likely to fail the objective of saving $10,000. 
Coming back to subscriptions, the real problem is that people don't scour their credit card statements the way that they should. So here's an exercise for you. Examine your most recent credit card statement and identify all recurring subscriptions. Then cut back to one subscription in each category like entertainment, fitness, etc. If you can manage to cut back from 12 subscriptions to six subscriptions, you just saved $109 per month. To systemize this effort, set up price alerts for subscription services on apps like Honey and consider getting these subscriptions only when you receive a price alert. This is a great way to try out the service and see if it actually adds value to your lifestyle. If it doesn't, you can just cancel it. The third lever is stop eating out. Eating out is getting expensive. The average cost of dinner for two with drinks is around $80. Even fast food is not immune to recent price increases. A Big Mac combo now costs nearly $18 in some parts of the country, which is just absurd. And portion sizes are also shrinking due to a phenomenon called shrinkflation. To save money, meal prep either lunch or dinner each day of the week. Meals prepared at home are five times less expensive than buying out. Taking meal prepped lunches to work for just three days of the week will save you $15 per day, which adds up to $180 per month. But you don't have to completely give up eating out. A guiding principle would be to eat out when the meal is something you can't prepare at home and make it an event where it's not just a meal, but an overall experience. Think of Benihana's for example. It's not just a meal, but it's the entertainment value of seeing your food being prepared and cooked in interesting ways. The tally of savings up to this point is $686 per month. Make sure this cash is not sitting idle in a checking account. Rather, put it in a high interest savings account, which at the time of this video earned almost 4.5%. And the fourth lever is get free money from work. There is a tendency to spend money when it shows up in the checking account, but that's not the case with money that's sitting in an investment account like a 401k. If you have a 401k, transfer cash into this account at the start of each month. Better yet, if your company does a 401k match, you should take advantage of it because it's free money. For example, if you make $60,000 per year and your company matches up to 4% of your salary in contributions, that means that if you contributed $2,400 into your 401k, the company will match your contribution dollar for dollar. This adds up to $4,800 of savings per year or $400 per month. If your company has no 401k match program, you still saved $200 per month. And the best part is, you don't even need to systemize this effort. Once you sign up for contributions, your portion is automatically deducted from your paycheck before taxes and the company contributes automatically as well. The current tally of savings is $1,086 per month with 401k match and $886 per month without it. Both amounts are far in excess of the $833 goal. You can see how quickly the savings add up. Also, notice that you only needed to tackle a few high impact items to make this happen. You didn't need to nitpick over small items like buying coffee or avocado toast at brunch. These are insignificant items to fuss over and the most you're going to save here is a few hundred dollars. Moreover, finagling over these small items is more likely to irritate you than anything else. And you shouldn't have to suffer through this process because you'll then lose motivation and be less likely to stick with the plan. So, Pick and choose the areas of your life that are heavy hitters in terms of spend and that you don't mind sacrificing for the time frame of saving the $10,000. Now, because you watched up to this point of the video, here's a bonus tip. This step-by-step -step guide is scalable for time. Instead of 12 months, if you wanted to save the $10,000 in six months, you can apply the same logic. The monthly savings target now becomes $1,677. With a bigger monthly target and a compressed timeline, you might need to nitpick over those smaller items and think outside the box more. Given the higher monthly savings target, you might actually consider making coffee at home and skip avocado toast at brunch. That will save you approximately $120 per month. On the income front, you might want to add more shifts at your current work or take on new part-time work on the weekend. The trade-off with a shorter time frame is that you have to dig deeper to find expenses to cut and stretch your earning capacity at the same time. Ultimately, it's your choice. 
you decide how to apply this step-by-step -step guide based on the immediacy of your needs for saving the $10,000 and what you are willing to do for it. Once you have the $10,000 saved up, take a moment to appreciate the hard work you put into saving this amount. More importantly, take a moment to appreciate the discipline you've developed. At this point, you have two choices. You can either stop here and get back to a more normal lifestyle, or you can continue to do what you started and keep stacking up the savings. If I were you, I would want to keep some of those systems in place and continue saving up. Let me know in the comment section what other approaches have worked for you in saving up cash. If you received value from this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.